Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger, my friends. It is time to talk the King of Fighters 15. As you may well know, sometime later this month, King of Fighters 15 is going to be getting its first major patch. The two biggest things that we know are coming with the patch is it's coming with Team Southtown. So that's the infamous Geese Howard, Billy Kane, and Ryuji Yamazaki. And also on top of the three characters, we are getting our first major balance patch. Now, as for particulars of the balance patch, we'll probably save that for a later video, but it's safe to say a lot of the characters that are generally considered lower tier, like Whip, Ramon, and the King of Dinosaurs, probably will get some buffs. And certain characters that are considered higher tier, like Gatto, Vanessa, and Terry Bogard, maybe they'll get a little bit of a nerf to take some of the edge off. Now, I will say up front here, uh, for the sake of the game, I hope the top tier characters aren't hammered too hard. There's a lot of tier talk going on in a lot of other fighting games right now. You know, uh, Lab Coat 21 is killing Dragon Ball Fighters. Happy Chaos is killing Guilty Gear Strive. Luke is killing Street Fighter V. I think King of Fighters, while well, the top tiers are definitely the top tiers, I don't think any of them are as destructive as some of those other villains. Like, you certainly don't have to pick Ralph, Vanessa, or Terry to win in this game. You just don't. That said, though, even though I don't want the top tiers to get hammered too much, I would really appreciate the lower tiers to be brought up a fair bit because characters like Whip, characters like Ramon especially, they just do not match up to the average character in this game. So that's the balance stuff. And also, just in case you were not aware, the balance patch and all of Team Southtown will be legal for Combo Breaker at the end of this month. I expect big changes for this patch and with the new characters as well. That basically means... King of Fighters 15 will probably be one of the, if not the most exciting game at Combo Breaker this year. And also Combo Breakers at the end of the month. So expect the patch, you know, to drop before Combo Breaker. So new characters and a bunch of balance changes. That is all well and very, very good. But what are some of the other things that SNK should be looking at for either this patch or future patches for KOF 15? Now the big one, and this is definitely the big one with a bullet is fixing the issues we have with matchmaking. No matter what platform you're playing on, you know, be it PlayStation 4 or 5 or PC or whatever, you've probably run into matchmaking problems. Where you're searching for a match, you're searching for a match, you're searching for a match, and just goes on forever. And while you're doing that, there's hundreds, thousands of other people doing the exact same thing. We're all searching for a match, and yet somehow we do not get matched up with one another. This is an incredibly frustrating issue, especially because, at least on the PC end, apparently uses like your window settings for matchmaking, which is very odd and archaic, to say the least. Which also probably explains why it's easier for me to find a game on PlayStation than it is on PC. Because it's probably trying to prioritize finding other Canadians, Versus people from, say, like New York, which I directly, I can see from outside my door. But regardless of how we get there, there's problems with the matchmaking, cut and dry. There's a few things you can do to make it just a little bit easier for yourself. Specifically, matchmaking through the training mode. Maybe confirmation bias, I don't know. I can only tell you what I personally have experienced. But when I do matchmaking through training mode, I get matches at like a 10 plus times faster rate than traditional matchmaking. Don't ask me why or how, it just works that way. But regardless, that's it in a nutshell. Matchmaking is potentially the biggest issue with the game right now. It obviously can be fixed some way, somehow. We just need a patch, and hopefully this upcoming patch, to fix it. Also, just to throw it out there, it would be a great boon to the game if we are allowed to queue up for both a ranked match and a casual match at the same time, say like Street Fighter V allows you to do. It just makes finding matches faster if you don't care what kind of match you get. Another thing that should definitely be added is crossplay. Now I know, yes, Rufamonger, everyone wants crossplay for every fighting game. Sure, absolutely. But you know what? Hey, we're starting to get it, right? Guilty Gear Strive, starting with Season 2, will add crossplay to the game so PC and PlayStation can play with each other nicely. Add this to the fact that King of Fighters is on more consoles and systems than, say, a Guilty Gear is, right? 
like Xbox players are probably the minority of all the players. And then we have weird systems like the Epic Game Store, which usually don't play well with like Steam versions of the game. So crossplay would be fantastic for bringing all the big King of Fighters family together. And SNK has the resources to do this. In case you are unaware, SNK is no longer this small, you know, scrappy contender it has been for the last, well, many years. They're in the big boy league now. Saudi Arabia's Mohammed bin Salman has basically finished his conquest of SNK. So they own now 96% of SNK. And with this, SNK has gotten an absolutely massive influx of cash. To the point they're calling this their second founding. And they're going out to be a top 10 publisher in the world in the next 10 years. So EA, Activision, Sony, Ubisoft, all that kind of stuff, right? SNK is looking to go to direct head-to-head -head competition with them, and they have the money to do it. That's how much money they have now. They're already planning as well to build a brand new, fully unique AAA title. So what I'm trying to get across here, building them up like this, is they can afford the little, you know, money, monetary penalty Sony slaps on people to put crossplay into their games. SNK, I say this with all due respect and love in my heart. If you want to be a big leaguer, this is a really good way to prove it, to get your name out there in the community that you're willing to do crossplay. Everyone benefits, you can do it, and you can afford it, so please get it done. Besides all that, there's still a lot of things King of Fighters can do right. Now, don't get me wrong, King of Fighters 15 does a lot right as it stands, but like training mode, it already is actually one of the better training modes out there in fighting games right now. But how about give us the real frame data instead of, you know, just plus or minus? It's never too late to add little quality of life things to the game like that. So that all said, those are some of the things that King of Fighters can be adding to the game besides just the upcoming characters and the upcoming balance changes. Those are obviously a very, very big deal. But, you know, if we want King of Fighters to last through the years as it should, as it deserves to, things like better quality matchmaking and crossplay are definitely things to help get it done and get it across the finish line. Only hoping for the best here, so let's see if they can pull it off. So as far as balance change stuff goes, we'll talk about who deserves nerfs and buffs a little bit later on on the channel. And of course, when the patch hits, expect a full breakdown. I think there's going to be some very interesting changes, so we're going to have to wait and see how it all plays out. That all said though, my friends, this is the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some King of Fighters.